Welcome to this week's Hymn of the Week. This week we have EOW 843, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness. The text is by a very well-known hymn writer, Rusty Edwards. He says plenty of collections of hymns out. Uh, feel free to check some of those out. This text, though, came to him as he was in a Bible study, as studying about the life and ministry of Jesus. So you can see uh, a lot of the text, if we look there, what it was coming out of that Bible study. Freeing the prisoners, blindness into sight, preached gospel, healing diseases, calming storms, feeding thousands, blessed the children, uh, drove out demons. So all the different things that Jesus did in ministry uh, are being described here. Of course, this is also a great hymn for the season of Epiphany because of the theme of light and the darkness being broken using that text. Plus we have the sun shining onto the organ right now. So that makes it also quite convenient. So I have a quote by Rusty Edwards I'd like to read to you. He says, It is astounding how much Jesus did in such a brief earthly ministry. Yet more astounding is how God's blessing and saving acts continue on through Christ. How can we do other than to praise this light in the darkness? Which is why I don't see uh, it to be a surprise that the music or the tune for this selected is Nettleton, a very well-known tune, shape note melody, found in the collection of J. Wyeth Repository of Sacred Music, 1813 in Harrisburg. A uh, congregational evangelist was called Nettleton, and he was named, uh, the tune was named after him. So we don't really know any more information beyond that. However, what we do know is that the hymn and its energy that comes through the rhythm, such as in the B line, so the third line, drives it and gives us that idea of the one breaking the darkness. So here is praise the one who breaks the darkness. interlude in there from Hal Hobson using his idea a bit. It sounds a lot like the organist Paul Mons with some of the responses and uh, that he would compose to some of the hymn tunes and some of his chorale preludes. So it reminds me of his music, uh, but it also brings that energy into the tune of the one breaking the darkness. And at the end of verse two, I'm going to play this again for you. Uh, it ends, instead of D, we're going to go to the 6 and go to the B minor, quenching thirst in every land. And then this uh, interlude for me is going to be 
more prayer of how God does break through the darkness and sometimes we don't always see it or maybe we do encounter it and we don't give credit to what God is actually doing. Uh, so let me play the last part of that verse and I'm going to take us out this week with that lovely little interlude and encourage us to remind or to remind ourselves that God is breaking through the darkness. Have a great week. So let's take it from the middle there.